everyone, it's Nicole. Welcome back to my channel and the Snow Magical Sal finishing tutorial. I have broken today's video up into three sections. We have our freeze frame display piece finishing, lacing the piece, and finally embellishing. For our freeze frame finishing, here are the supplies I'm using to finish mine. The freeze frame display board, I'm using the small size white and black paints, paint brushes, sandpaper, and a coarse grit and then a very fine grit, tight bond glue, antique gold rub and buff, spring clamps, and some clear polyurethane. Now, once I have all of my supplies, we are gonna go ahead and dive in to painting. I like to protect my work surface with something. I actually had wax paper close by from something else I was doing. So I'm going to lay that down on top of my mat so that I don't get paint all over my work mat that I have to clean off. The spring clamps are definitely optional, but I love them. If you've seen some of my finishing tutorials before, I use them to clamp and hold my pieces together while that tight bond glue is drying. You could also put something heavy on top if you'd like. To start, we are going to paint the base piece of our freeze frame. Now you should have the snow globe portion, two of the rounded base, and two of the long rectangle bases. I went ahead and shook up this white Tommy Art white mineral paint. This is in the color white, and I am painting the top of my snow globe. This is a going to be a pretty simple finish. Nothing crazy here. I'm bringing out all of my favorite techniques, which is paint, whether it is um, acrylic paint or mineral paint like I'm using today, spray paint, etc. I chose to use this paint mostly because it's so cold outside and spray paint I need to do outside. And I really wanted to keep the amount of time that I had to do work outside at a minimum. So I chose this paint. And once I have the front of my snow globe bay piece painted with the white paint, and you can see I tried to just go back and forth. I tried to clean up the edges. Don't worry about that too much now. We can come back and clean that up with our sandpaper later. I'm going to set that aside while I paint the base pieces. And you'll notice I didn't go all the way down to the bottom on the snow globe itself because those base pieces will be covering this. The other thing is I found my paint needed two coats just to get really good coverage. Now, I know that the instructions for Snow Magical have some paint um, recommendations that Brenda Gervais of With Thy Needle and Thread used to finish her piece, so definitely uh, follow that if you want. These were all in my stash. I did not go buy anything special to complete this project, so I really recommend shopping your stash, see what you have on hand that you can use for finishing. I am painting with this brown black color. I really like it because it's not all the way brown and it's not all the way black, uh, thus brown black. I also thought what would be a fun option would be to stain the base of the snow globe, which I did briefly consider, but I had the paint out and I went with it. And I have to say, super, super happy with the results. And I think by the time we add rub and buff, that is going to really um, just make this magical. If I can do a play on words with our snow magical finish. This dries really fast. You can see even as I'm painting this, the one side dry was drying and enough that I could kind of flip it around and not really be picking up the paint with my fingers. So once this is, and I'm only painting one side, I should also mention of those uh, pieces with the brown black paint, once everything or once I'm done painting the brown I'm going to go back to the snow globe and do my second coat of white you don't have to if you like the coverage you can definitely do one coat if two coats isn't enough and you want to do three coats of paint by all means do whatever looks best to you but I'm going to do a second coat now because I'm doing these base pieces and there is a front and a back 
I will need to flip my snow globe over. Well, I don't need to, but I will be flipping my snow globe over and painting that second side. But I definitely want to make sure that the front side of my snow globe is good and dry before I do that. Um, I don't want any of the paint to come off. So I'm going to do all of these sides first and then really off camera I will be doing the back side of the globe. I just wanted you to be aware that if you're going to do that it will require a little additional drying time. If you don't care if the back of your snow globe is painted then you know you can just leave it that bare wood and that's totally fine as well. So I've added my second coat of the brown black paint. Everything is dry and I am ready to add some sanding. Now, if you don't like sand the look the sanded look or the distressed look for your pieces, I would just kind of do those edges where maybe there's a, that excess paint. This is, I believe, 180 grit sandpaper that I'm using first. It is um, very coarse and it's going to give you that great result where it really distresses. I personally love the distressed look. This is probably my favorite way to finish any type of display board. Like if I am, I hate to say limited on time, I wasn't limited on time with this finish, but if I'm limited on time, or if I don't know what I wanna do, but I have the display piece, I don't know how I wanna paint it or finish it, I will generally go with painting and distressing with sandpaper. So I've distressed around the edges, I've cleaned those up, and now I want to distress my base. And this is where the magic to me is going to come in, especially with this base piece. I want it to look a little old, a little rusty, a little crusty. You know, we don't want it to be perfect by any means. But with a coarse sandpaper like I'm using here, it will kind of be gritty. So we're going to go back over everything with a uh, fine sandpaper. I believe I used 400 weight for that the last piece, which you'll see in a minute. But this coarse sandpaper, and I really wish I had it in here. I think it was either 180 or 120, um, is going to clean up the edges. So you'll notice, see this little tool, and I highly recommend this little tool. If you're doing any little finishing like this, pick one of these up. You will not regret it. Uh, I use it all the time. But I'm cleaning all that paint that's dried on the edges that looks terrible because I want my snow globe to be beautiful. And I promise it doesn't take long. But look how great the base is looking. I mean, it's a little dusty and sandy right now, but it's going to look fantastic. I love the distressing. Now, I also have a sander. But again, it's winter. It's cold. I don't want to go outside. And you know, Really, for something this small, I feel like the handheld manual little sander works so much better than my bigger sander. Sometimes that gets a little out of control and, you know, it's it's a little too big probably for these. So that's how that's going to look when it's layered. Let's switch to our very fine grit sandpaper. See that you can see all those little lines and things? I am going and I'm being pretty aggressive. I am going over the whole surface with this fine grit, 400 grit sandpaper. And I know, I wish we had feel-a-vision. It's so smooth, you guys. It feels amazing, which is what I want. I don't want to, I don't want to feel those paint lines. I want it to be super smooth. So I'm going completely over all of these pieces as well. And now I'm just wiping off this my sanding so that I don't have any of that sanded off paint on my pieces before we start the next step. And this was quick, really, really quick. I will say probably the thing that took the longest for this entire process was painting the piece and getting all of that ready. Now I'm going to get rid of that wax paper and I, again, I still just had it handy, so I used it. Here are my pieces. Now you can tell one of them looks a little different than the rest and it looks amazing. That's because we're taking rub and buff and we're placing it around the edges. If you want, you can use a paintbrush. I like to use my ring finger when I use rub and buff, but it is magical. 
let's say you want more of a silver look than antique gold. There are other colors of rub and buff available. This is the only color I have. It's personally my favorite. It can be used on a lot of different surfaces, but I wanted to see if I could make my snow globe base look almost like antique metallic-y. And so that is what we're trying to achieve here. And I think we've got it. Look how good that looks. And I was just showing you there that I took the very fine grit, the 400 grit sandpaper. If I was a little, like I got a little too much rub and buff on, I just sanded a little bit of it off. In fact, I kind of like how it looks barely sanded. You don't want to be aggressive with it. So I am just going, I apply the, the rub and buff. I go around the edges working it in, buffing it, basically, it is rub and buff, buffing it in. That one looks pretty good, almost not enough. I think I just took whatever was left on my finger and wiped it on there to get a little bit more of that antique gold. There are no rules here. This was really fun, but it's it's really sticking. It I mean, it's gonna, it will go over your paint too, but it's really sticking to that edge where we sanded off the paint. And I love it. I think it looks absolutely amazing. So just, and I'm not going all the way down the sides because we have that layering piece. So just kind of that rounded edge here. Now you can choose to do this on your snow globe or not. At this point, I really wasn't sure if I wanted to add this to my snow globe, but ultimately I decided, you know, I think I do, and I'm glad I did. I feel like it flows, plus I think this antique gold around the snow globe gives it a little bit of shine. Oh, I got way too much rub and buff there. I sanded that off. Um, it gives it a little bit shimmer and shine that I think gives it... Uh, maybe a little bit more of that glass look. That's what I'm going for. So I'll show you that here in just a second. But I've got my bases completely done. And really, I think it's, this is a good time to glue my base pieces together before I do the rub and buff for the top of the snow globe. I really worked kind of in sections and if I could let things dry while I worked on something else, that's what I did. Now, I find that my tight bond glue doesn't come out of the wonderful little nozzle there very well. And I think mar most of it is it's cold, it's winter. So I just uh, open it up, squeeze some out on my ring finger again. It's a fantastic tool, your fingers. And I am going to glue each side together and I'm using my clamps. Now you want to make sure this is lined up at this point and does not move because it will move a little bit till it, it is secure. But I love these clamps for holding things together and getting a really good seal. You could put something heavy on top if you've got like some books or something like that. Again, just make sure that your pieces aren't shifting and moving because you'll be bummed if they are not where you want them to be. And I like to keep a rag or a wet rag or baby wipes handy when I am working with paints and inks and anything like that to clean my fingers, especially if there is a concern at all that you might get, let's say, the brown paint on the white part of the snow globe or glue where you don't want it, things like that. So now we have our snow globe. I am going to take that rub and buff and I am using, I should also mention, I should have mentioned this earlier, a very tiny bit goes a very long way, you guys. You do not have to use much of this at all. So I am going around the edges, working that around the edges of my snow globe. And just like with the base, if you get some where you don't want it, you can easily buff that or sand that away with your sandpaper. Or if you don't like it at all, sand it off, repaint and start over. In fact, there was, I kind of got that a little smudgy and I wasn't super happy with it. Now I want to remind you, this is where our, our cross stitch piece goes. So ultimately not a lot of this is going to show. I don't want that rub and buff coming too far in. I just kind of want a glowy edge and maybe you don't, maybe you wanna leave it raw, that is awesome. 
So again, I wanna clean that off really well and make sure there is no dust. And I, you can see I've already painted the other side. I am gonna make it match. This is the back side, and um, I don't care quite as much if this is as neat. I want it to match, but I don't care if it's as, as beautiful as the front, um, just because it's not going to be seen really. But I do, if you catch a glimpse of it, depending on where you display it in your home, I think a finished back looks nice. You can see I was a little more aggressive um, with my rub and buff, and then I was a little more aggressive with my sandpaper to clean that up. Now I am gonna do one last little clean around the edges. Let's make sure that there's no rub and buff. Um, let's get into all those little nooks and crannies and get as much paint off as possible so it looks beautiful and clean. I love it. I think this is going to be beautiful. There, I wrote back on that one. That way I know it's the back when I go to assemble. And we're just going to clean all of this up. At this point, we are ready to glue our snow globe and our base together. So looks like my two base pieces are ready to go. So I'm going to glue it together so that this can be nice and secure. And I also want to glue it together so that I can take it outside or a well-ventilated area and spray this piece with polyurethane. So once I have, once this is secure, once the glue has dried, so I am going to clamp this, meaning that once, you know, it, the, the clamp has sat on there for a while, sorry, I can't talk, um, then I will take it outside. I'm gonna spray the front and the back. I just stood it right up because it is made to be a freestanding piece. I stood it up. I uh, sprayed both sides with polyurethane, let it dry completely, and then um, we'll do the finishing a little bit later on. So you might wanna spread this out over a couple of days. I did this like for, like I had a lot of it done and then I did this first thing in the morning and then I didn't do the assembly until like either later that day or the next day. It really depends. Whatever works for you. Just make sure it's dry. Okay, you can see I've got my clamps. It's drying. I'm making sure everything is nice and straight while that glue is still wet. Okay. I am setting that aside and it's time to do some lacing. For lacing, we need our Snow Magical stitched piece, a circle template, there is one in the chart if you're stitching on 40 count, upholstery thread, a sewing needle, press on board, and batting. I am tracing my circle template. I do not recommend using wax paper. I was being really lazy the day I did this. I mean, you could use another piece of paper or you could cut it straight from your chart. I may stitch this again to give as a gift. And so I did not uh, want to cut up my chart, but you can trace it on anything. If you have a light box, I'd probably trace it on another piece of paper, honestly, or hold it up to a window, which is probably what I should have done. So, but I have my pattern. All I need is this, this template to trace on some press-on board, which is what I have here. This is a scrap of press-on board. For a 40 count, it's not gonna be very big. I have some scraps of batting, and then I have some really nice, strong upholstery thread in a needle. So now that I have my template from my chart, I can put that away. And I just have a Sharpie here. It does not matter. You can use a pencil, whatever you've got. This is not going to show, so it really does not matter. This is why I say don't use wax paper. It just did not stay put. It worked fine. <laughs> but, um, you know, I like to say what, what worked great and what didn't. This really just did not. And I think I have some circle templates. I should have checked to see if any of those were the same size. I could have just used those. Now I'm taking some scissors and cutting this out. I know you guys are going to ask, no, I do not think you should die cut um, this even if you have a circle and you are familiar with die cutting. I'm not going to tell you not to. I'm going to tell you I will choose not to. I don't want to ruin my die cut machine. I just think this is too thick and I don't think it'll work. Um, I It's not perfect, but it will be fine. 
I like to double up my batting. So you can see here, I've switched my scissors. I got my fabric scissors out now. And I am doubling it up because I personally like how my pieces look with a double layer of batting because I use warm and white or warm and natural. It's a pretty thin cotton batting. If you use something with polyester or poly mix and you think it's lofty enough, maybe you can get away with one layer of batting. I use what I have on hand and I wanna encourage you guys to do the same. So I was cutting it, it wasn't great. So I'm just gonna grab my rotary cutter to clean up the edges of my batting just a little bit. Now with press on board, one side is sticky and one side is not. We are actually attaching the one piece of the batting to the sticky. And I use something sharp, just a piercing or poking tool there to pull that up. And I'm laying the batting down and I'm gonna smooth it out, clear out to the edge. And then I just lay the other one on top. It will kind of grip and hold. It's time for our stitching piece. I'm gonna tell you right now, I did not do this super um, professional <laughs> and I didn't cut it super perfect. And part of that is on, on purpose because when you see the finished piece, do you notice that? So I once I had it centered and I'm holding it in place, you can see I'm just cutting around with my scissors in a circle shape. I wanna get rid of a little bit of that excess bulk, probably could have even trimmed it a little bit closer. Is it perfect? No. Will it matter? No. So now I have a piece of upholstery thread. I'm going to thread up my needle. I did have to reload mine. I probably could have started with a really long piece of upholstery thread. Sometimes I err on the side of caution and don't. I hate when things get tangled. This thread though, upholstery thread, it's kind of waxy. It's probably gonna be fine. Starting, I flipped it over, starting from the front, I did not one end, but it's not gonna really hold. I'm going to tie this off, which you'll see in a little bit. It'll hold well enough for now. We're going to do a loose running stitch all the way around. What we wanna do is gather up our fabric so that it pulls around. See how it's starting to pull around? And I am doing the absolute easiest way. This is how I do any type of circle finish, is I gather it just like this. And I'm gonna continue until I get back to where I started. It's very forgiving and it really is the best way to get a super smooth uh, edge and get a nice tight fit for your finished piece. So I pull this and I think the knot pulled through actually. I wanna see if I can see it on camera. I know it did. <laughs> <laughs> when I finish this, but no, maybe not. I probably happen now. Okay, at this point, we haven't secured anything. My recommendation is to flip your piece over, smooth it out, move it around, use your hands like you can see me using my hands, and pull it around the edges, just making sure that you like how it looks. This is the time. This is the time right here to fix it. Oh, it must have pulled through when I was d pulling tight here. Yeah. You can see me looking at it like, oh no, what did I do? So I'm actually going to, I need to gather this up just a little bit closer. I am going to knot this at this point. I find before we actually start the lacing, we've just gathered it right now. Before we start lacing, I like to knot it because if this comes out or if my lacing comes out, I don't want the whole thing to come out and have to redo it all. Okay, again, back to the front, double checking. How do I think it looks? Does it look good? Am I happy with it? I think it looks fine. I'm gonna check it with my finishing board. I like it. I And right at this point, this is right when I had taken my clamps off. So I haven't done the polyurethane yet. Okay, starting there, I am going to be lacing back and forth. So I'm gonna go all one direction and then I will go back the other direction. I know I've done a lacing video before. I am not pro a professional lacer. Um, 
I love the look though and I do see myself going more that direction for finishing uh, lacing my pieces I think it gives you a much nicer finish um, I don't mind you know the sticky tape and things like that but I do very much think that the lacing there's something about the lacing that just makes the edges look super super nice and I'm going to finish out kind of this side, I think. I think I'm going to knot it off here. You can see I'm just doing a couple of little knots. And I need to finish this direction, and then I can go back and do the other direction. This, I really love this thread. It's perfect. And I left a lot of this in for you guys. I hope it's helpful. This did not take long at all. And I hope you can kind of tell as well when I said that it didn't matter that my, my stitched piece was cut perfectly. You wouldn't know now. Once you have it gathered and wrapped around your circle, you are not going to know that it is not a perfect finish or a perfect circle. It is, hey, we're gonna call it a perfect finish. I know it's not perfect, and I am not a professional finisher. I just love finishing things myself, and everyone can do it. All right, I'm gonna have to knot this again. You can see me pulling pretty tight. I want that to be nice and tight, and then I'm knotting. And we need to go back the other way. And I like to double check constantly, like pull that fabric around. I'm making sure, does it look wonky? Does it look funny? I wanna make sure that it looks good the entire time. So I've cut just another, it's not a super long length because we really just need to go back and forth the other way. Once we have this, um, I will go and spray polyurethane on my freeze frame. And again, please know I did this outside. Um, I let it dry completely. I came back later and did the embellishing for this. That is something that I think um, is good to note at this point. When you're doing a finishing like this, you may not be able to finish it all in one sitting. If you've got any type of clear coat or if it's cold and, and paint and uh, like your finish, your polyurethane finish or whatever you're using ha uh, takes a little bit longer to dry. During the summer and warmer months, it's a little bit quicker, but it may take a little bit longer in the winter. So definitely account for that. I didn't think this took very long, but uh, maybe you do all your painting one day and then while that's drying, you do your lacing, your finishing, you gather up your embellishments, and then the next day or on the weekend, you can sit down and finish it up in no time. Okay, I've knotted that off. There is my piece. Oh, he's cute. I just love this snowman. Now, I'm working the fabric. I'm working it with my hands, you can see. And we're ready for embellishing. For embellishing, I'm using rickrack trim, ribbons, a bow tool, greenery, pine cones or other embellishments of your choosing, a hot glue gun, and E6000. I decided I'm kind of copying uh, Brenda Gervais' finish and I am doing a rickrack trim around the edge. I do not have a source for this. This is not pure white. I do often use white uh, vintage trim from Lori Holt. This is a trim that I got like in a trim pack or I had on hand and I've had for a while. I don't know. We, If you have, if you sew or if you finished for a while, you may have a drawer of randoms too. This may have been from a Primrose Cottage ribbon pack at some point, but I think it's kind of a creamy white. And here's why I mention this. I feel like it matches the grits color of Weeks Dye Works floss that was called for in the chart for the snowballs and the snowman. It's what I used. I used all the called for floss. 
and I think that it coordinates nicer than white does. So you might want to see if you can pick up kind of a creamy white or ivory uh, rickrack if you wanna do something similar. Now you'll notice with my hot glue gun, I'm going slow, so slow, you guys. A little bit of glue and then pushing that rickrack in place and double checking on the front to make sure that the rickrack trim is showing up, that I've not got any of those little hills or valleys wonky. So I'm working super duper slow, like maybe two, two and a half inches of glue at a time. And then I check it. And then I pull up anything that doesn't look good before that glue dries. I peel the glue off of my fingers and I go back. I, pr I know I need those little silicone fingers. I keep forgetting to pick them up. So again, we're just going to, and here, see how it got, was a little too much in, so I'm just gonna pull that out. It goes around the circular shape perfectly. How pretty is this? You could even sandwich another circle wrapped in fabric to the back and maybe um, sandwich a ribbon in between, and this could be an ornament for your tree for next year if you're not doing a display board finish. I think there's a lot of amazing ways you could finish this piece. Okay, so I'm gonna snip that and I'm just gonna secure that here on the back, make sure it's laying nice. And again, peel all the glue off my fingers. And there is my piece ready to be glued onto the freeze frame. Here's the polyurethane. I know I didn't film this part, you guys. Literally, I tried to spend as little time outside as possible. I was freezing. Um, so I just wanted to show you what I used, and then the, the freeze frame piece. For my embellishments, I kicked around several things. You've probably seen several things kind of on my screen, but I decided on these Tim Holtz pine, col pine cones, but they're brown, and I wanted them to look snowy. So I'm taking some Tim Holtz white grit paste and a palette knife, and I'm like tapping it on to these pine cones. And if you're a paper crafter or a mixed media artist, as well as a cross stitcher and you're watching this, um, hopefully this gives you some ins inspiration if you love creating with Tim Holtz pieces. I love Tim's stuff. And I find myself using a lot of his ideology line, which is what these are from, for my cross stitch finishes. But I wanted my pine cones to look snowy. They, it works with my snowy uh, snowman. I did do this to three pine cones. I do end up only using two, which is fine because I prefer this look for my pine cones rather than just plain brown. So I'll just put this back in my embellishment drawer for use on another project. I also have my bow tools out. These are the bow tools from Chantal's 141 Design. So she makes the freeze frame, she makes the bow tools, she makes all of the things. I originally thought I was going to do a 2.5 bow, but we're gonna do 3.5. 3.5 is my most often used bow size that I use. And I kind of took this um, natural woven ribbon, I don't even know exactly, it's a Stampin' Up ribbon, I've had it forever, both ribbons I'm using today. And I'm just making a single ribbon. No, oh, I didn't like that one. So see, sometimes that happens. I ripped it out. We're going to make another one real quick. And I will have a bow tutorial coming here on my channel, uh, just a dedicated bow tutorial. But I know Chantal has one as well. So definitely check out her channel. Okay, there is my little pretty bow. And I played around. I thought about using teal ribbon. Ultimately, I'm just kind of a, a natural type girl. I like how this looked. <laughs> so that's what I ended up going with. And I love it. These little greenery sprigs are left over from, I believe, the sleigh ride sal is what I think these are from. I have a bin of finishing supplies and I grabbed my little leftovers and they worked great here. And they are snipped from a much bigger sprig. There are no sprigs that I have found that are this tiny at Hobby Lobby or Michael's. I think this was a Michael's sprig. Maybe, I might be wrong about that. It's probably Hobby Lobby. But um, I just use leftovers. 
And I thought I had this little leftover ribbon might work, but it was too short. This is another ribbon from Stampin' Up! that I've had in my stash forever. It's a white, but it has kind of this sparkly edge to it. I used that to tie around my snow globe base. I wanted a ribbon around it, but I didn't want the thick ribbon. And then I had already tied that white ribbon but I didn't think it was substantial enough. I liked this uh, more natural ribbon. So that's how I came to the two ribbons. I am gonna use a little hot glue to secure my knot to the front. I do wanna warn you, however, that sometimes the hot glue, once dry, does not like to stick to the polyurethane very well. If you have E6000 glue or just the next time you're at the store, you pick some up, I would recommend it. I did replace the hot glue on, on all of this part with the E6000. It's going to stick much better. And I wanted to show you that snowflake button would look so cute in the center. I opted not to use it, but I do think a snowflake button would be really cute there. Oh, and I dropped that. That almost was a catastrophe. Be glad you that I voiced this over. <laughs> instead of what I probably really said. Now I put hot glue on the back of my stitch piece and pressed it to my snow globe. We're going to glue the bow down now. And it's mostly attached to that other ribbon, so I think the hot glue worked there. I kind of like how that has that two-tone there. And then we're going to tuck in these little sprigs. And I cut them down and I cut them down even more. Now, this is where I said I use the hot glue. It's not gonna secure. I do end up using the E6000 for this step and I am much, much happier with it. And I am using the teeniest, tiniest pieces. I think I used about three little sprigs of my greenery. And I'm kind of playing with my ribbon, my ribbon tails, my ribbon loops, getting that right where I want it to go. And then I want to figure out where to put the pine cones. I, I thought I'd use all three. I did not like that at all. We are definitely going to just use two. And I decided to put them down kind of underneath the bow. And I love it. To me, this just adds the perfect wintry touch. I don't want this to overly say Christmas. Could this sit out next Christmas? Absolutely, that's the goal, but it's something that can stay out all winter long. This looks beautiful. I've started getting out my winter things and I love how this snowman looks with my winter things. So E6000 will take a bit to dry. Here is my tip for this. I put the E6000 down. Oh, I'm having trouble getting it out. Once we get it out, we're gonna put a little dab. Oh, I'm securing my bow. And I am going to secure the pine cone, but I want them to kind of stick out. Well, that glue is gonna take a bit to dry. So I'm going to prop the edge of my scissors and like maybe a pencil or something, I'm trying to think, or maybe the other pine cone, the one I didn't use, underneath, I lodge it underneath to help hold it up and hold it in place while that dries. See, I don't like it up above at all. So there you can see it propped up. I'm gonna let that sit and dry and that is it, friends. Thank you so much for joining me for the Snow Magical Sal. I hope you've enjoyed this finishing tutorial. The supplies I used are listed and linked below the video here on YouTube. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel, click that like button, and don't forget to hit the notification bell to always be notified when I have a new floss tube stitching or quilting video. Thank you guys so much for joining me today, and we'll see you next time.